You know the old saying, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Are you afraid of the CPI? Maybe the PPI? Not me. I'm saying that Goldilocks has moved in and she plans to stay for quite a while. This is Randy Kirk. If you like the Sunday night show, better known as Monday Morning, then please hit like, hit subscribe, hit notify. Uh, as I mentioned in a couple of earlier videos today, I've never had a lineup of, of conversations, of interviews, of more importance than what's coming up this week. So hit notify for sure. And of course, you have to subscribe to do that. With regard to Patreon, um, listen, I've got a better deal. I've got a, you, you can, if you join Patreon, you still get to choose one of the four books. If you come in for $5 or two of them, if, if you choose to come in for $10. And then in addition though, you don't even have to join. You can just go up for free right now and you get a copy. You basically get to go in and read um, my uh, book that I never published called Doing the Hard Things. I think you'll find that there's value there. Lots of value. If you don't find value on every single page, I'm going to give you a free money back return on your zero, zero dollar investment. All right, let's go. Let's take a look here. The CPI. Of course, as you well know, if you follow this channel, I use Truflation. If you are not using Truflation, uh, if you are new to the channel and you don't know about Truflation and you really want to know what's going on with regard to inflation, you go to Truflation. It is uh, truflation.com. I don't make any money. I'm not uh, a shill for them. It's just a great value because it's telling you day by day what's actually going on with regard to inflation. And they use a bunch of different uh, signals. And those signals are uh, then broken down exactly the same way that the CPI is. So now you can compare it to the CPI. And they say they are at 97% correlation to the CPI. But what are they? They're correlating it two months ago. Okay. So you take a look two months ago when the CPI comes out right now, the CPI is looking at data that they've been collecting for the last two months, assorting for the last two months, and then putting into their analysis. And so they're way, running way behind. And so that is a roughly what, what the folks at Truflation suggest you do is look at it in terms of being about two months ahead of the CPI. If you go right back, if you go right now and you go back two months, then Truflation was about 2.8% year over year. So that's about what I'm saying that the uh, that was going to come in this week. And that is core inflation. Um, all right, let me look at here just to make sure I'm getting this all right and I don't get something wrong here because I hate it when I get something wrong. <laughs> yes, so we should come in year over year, I'm sorry, between 2.4 and 2.8. And quite frankly, I think we're going to come year over year or much closer to that 2.4 number. We should be under 0.2% from month over month, both headline and core. And the last two months, or I'm sorry, last month, and the street is believing that this month it will be 0.2% for both month over month and core. Well, all right. So why uh, why are things going to be different? Why could things potentially be different than that? The Fed uses the survey questions about the rental value of your home. All right, let me start over on that. Let me say it a little differently. A big piece of core of, of inflation in general on CPI and a huge piece of core inflation is housing. We know that rents have been flat for at least six months now, seven months. So that should start showing up. That should be absolutely showing up now in the CPI, which is a lagging indicator for the CPI. But when it comes to housing, housing has been coming down more rapidly over the last couple of months, three months, but then starting to tick back up again already. But they, that's not what they're looking at. They're not looking at what Redfin and Zillow and uh, uh, the rest of them are saying with regard to the house prices coming down. They're looking at the rental value of the home, and they're doing that as a survey that they take where they ask me. They call me on the phone and say, Randy, what do you think you could rent your house for? Well, I happen to be, I rent three pro two properties, and I kind of have an idea of what my, my the house we live in could rent for. But that's only because I'm in the rental game. Somebody, if I didn't wasn't in the rental game, how I wouldn't have a clue what my house could rent for. So anyway, this is how they get that number, and it's a big piece of the number that they come out with. So I am, but I'm still going to go with it. I'm going to say that we're under 0.2 percent 
uh, uh, you know, on a month over month and a year over year basis. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, you know, in other words, that the core, I'm sorry, core and uh, 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 headline will both be under 0.2% month over month for the second month in a row. It was 0.2 last month for both. And if you've got that going on, I don't see how you can get to the numbers that uh, the street are thinking it's going to be. So I think we get a beat there. Now, there's another element to this housing thing, and that is that even Chairman Powell has said that interest rates are hurting the cause of trying to lower inflation in homes, in purchased homes and bought in, in the kind of homes where you and I live and pay a mortgage. And that we're right now we have the worst supply in history and nobody's moving. Why? Well, because you've got golden handcuffs on. You can't move because you're sitting there with a 3%, 2.5% mortgage, and you're not going to move out of the house and get something with a 7%. Even if it might be smart for you to move right now, you're not moving. If you if you do move, if you do go get a 7% mortgage someplace else, you rent out the other property. You don't get rid of that mortgage. So anyway, it's going to take, we take really high interest rates. We have to be going back to like the nines, eights and nines before it would discourage people that need a house right now from trying to find a house. I talked to somebody over the weekend that's looking for a house right now. He doesn't care about the 7%. And he's a, a, a money a money manager. He's, a, he's an actual financial analyst. By the way, none of this is financial advice. I am not a financial analyst. <laughs> anyway, the street is predicting core at 4.7 year over year. Uh, that's down from 4.8 last month, but I don't think that, I don't know where they get the number. I don't think it's going to be anywhere close to that. So I, I'm looking for a very big beat on that. Um, what is up? Well, what is up is oil and gas prices, but they would not have registered that yet. And oil and gas are in the energy sector, which is part of what they uh, take out when they get to core. And so that's, they're going to still be seeing that as coming down. Uh, oil, obviously, and gas are ticking up the last 30 days, only the last 30 days. So they're not they're not even picking that up yet. And by the way, on true inflation, that's the only category that's going up. Every other category is down. OK, and we know commodities are down. If you listen to my uh, uh, review of the Kathy Wood report on Saturday morning, you know, that Kathy reported all the, the commodity, the, the, the basket of commodities is going down. All right. So. Uh, I think that we get a beat and a very solid market response from that beat. It's not going to be like 500 points on the Dow or something like that, but the market already believes inflation is a non-issue. Confirmation will be nice, but it won't, it, and it will cause the market to go up, but it's not going to be a big market mover. Okay, a day later, that's, that's on Thursday. On Friday, we have the PPI. Producer price indexes are projected to have risen 0.2% last month after rising 0.1% in June. The year over year, they're thinking might go up 0.7%. Now, that's that's for the whole year. That's not 7% for the year. They're talking about 0.7% for the entire year compared to an annual gain of just 0.1% in June. Well, when the producer price index is this low in terms of the increase, that's going to flow through the economy. Now, the producer price index doesn't have anything at all to do with oil prices. It doesn't have anything to do with commodity prices. Those are not produced. Those are mined. It has nothing to do with housing prices. So there's a lot of things that this doesn't count, but it's an important part. The consumer spending makes up 70% of the market uh, of, of the of the annual uh, annual expenses and probably more than that right now uh, because businesses are not investing that much right now. So, all right. So the PPI should be another beat on Friday. And uh, yeah, the market will like that too. So if you're getting my point here, the market is going to be happy all week. All right. Consumer credit is expected to show a big gain on Monday. So that's the, that's the big number on Monday is consumer credit. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, I don't know if it's going to be a big gain or not. Uh, multiple sources, this is going to go from, uh, you know, like up by 30% or something, or uh, yeah, more than that, 40, 40, 50% compared to last month. I don't know. I'm seeing multiple sources saying the consumers are starting to pull back. So I'm not sure whether they where they get that number. So I'm looking for a beat compared to the street on Monday on consumer credit. Um, I think they if they beat on that, uh, that might suggest softness, but I don't think it's going to go below last month's numbers. So that'll be good. Anyway, hard to tell what the street will do with that. Small business owner optimism is on the program for Tuesday. So you've got the uh, National Federation of Independent Businesses coming out with their uh Optimism index. Uh, estimates are that this will contract just a tiny bit 
probably having to do with small businesses is not having any luck getting financing. If they need financing, they're not getting it. The banks aren't giving it to them or it's much higher rates than they're used to paying. Um, so there might be a drop in optimism due to that. Uh, the, uh, the Wall Street is expecting this problem for Main Street. Um, but maybe if the lowered optimism doesn't happen, then the street would think that was a good sign that maybe the small businesses are in good cash position. I think that's true. I think small businesses are in a better position than, than anybody knows with regard to cash. People have been hoarding cash. People have been looking for a recession for a long time. People have been preparing for it. I think people have the cash. Wholesale inventories come in on uh, Tuesday as well. Um, I won't be able to report those until Wednesday because they come later in the day. Um, a reduction in wholesale uh, inventories is expected, and that would be excellent because that means that these people are going to have to start ordering in order to refill their basket because you can't sell from an empty basket. Oh, yeah, you've heard me say that before. Besides the CPI on Thursday, we get jobless claims on Thursday as well, and those are expected to be steady. That would be good. A decrease would also be good, meaning fewer people getting laid off. That would be good. A large unexpected increase would be bad. So if we're seeing a lot of people being laid off, the street might take that as softness, especially if there's other signals showing softness. But also watch for corrections in prior week's data. There's been lots and lots of corrections recently. I don't know what the administration is doing wrong right now in terms of getting their numbers right. I'm not used to, I've watched all of these kinds of data for years and years and years. These corrections are extremely large and frequent. I'm not sure what's going on. Then on Friday, we get consumer sentiment. Uh, that's expected to slightly improve because folks are happy about food prices. They're happy about gasoline prices. But again, the gasoline prices didn't start going up till like a week and a half ago. So that is not going to be in these numbers. I would say the next month's consumer confidence price numbers might actually not be that good. It, food prices are apparently really down really significantly. They're not going up. They're flat. Uh, uh, I reported the other day that uh, this gentleman who follows the Costco pricing very carefully goes in and does an analysis saying that Costco prices are actually down compared to last year. All right. Some of the Fred leadership will be out this week giving speeches. That's never good. <laughs> actually, they're out almost every week. I don't think you're going to see much except when the CPI and the PPI come out and that's on Thursday and Friday, late in the week, some Fed commentary might speak to whether if, the, if we get good, if we get beats, if it's looking really, really good, maybe you'll see the commentary suggest a little softening in, the, in, their, in, their, in their thinking, a little dovishness. Now, if it goes the other way, and I think there's zero, I mean, zero chance. I'm, I'm not talking about a 1% chance. I'm talking about there's 0% chance that the inflation numbers are going to be higher than expected unless there's something completely wrong with the analysis by the Fed. All right, let's go on now. Um, what is the market going to do with this? Well, first of all, I expect a slow news week. It's August. I don't think there's going to be any surprises in any of those numbers I just gave you. So the market should start recovering. I don't think, I don't think this was a big down leg uh, you know, like a 10 or a 20% sell-off in the Dow and the NASDAQ. So I think it'll start recovering from its rough week. Um, and I think that's what's going to happen with Tesla too. Uh, of course, in order to hit my target on Tesla, we would have to go up 47 points in six market days <laughs> because I said 300 by August 14th. Uh, eight points a day, every day, <laughs> or maybe 15 points in one day and not as many in some of the other days. Well, it's not impossible, um, and uh, I've got at least one person saying he'll join Patreon if we hit that number. Is anybody else in for that deal? Um, Elon, um, I'm going to call to you. I'm going to ask you, please, this would be a great week. You could help me out here. Could you announce the Cybertruck handoff day this week? <laughs> Just a small favor. Or maybe do a surprise reveal of the Highland this week and have it look just absolutely amazing. Or if no reveal, maybe there'll be a sighting of one without the camouflage on it anyway. And it's just really this hot looking car. <laughs> well, okay, we can dream, right? It's hard to really predict Tesla right now. There are so many giga catalysts, so many over the next 90 days. I'm going to do a, uh, uh, I'm going to do a video on that. Um, everybody's kind of waiting for these multiple big shoes to drop. And so I don't know if I'm going to miss my number by next Monday, 
But it, I do believe Tesla will be up, 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 you know, pretty much all week, barring any negative news. And if any major news comes in, any of these cattles happen, who knows? All right. The pre-market right now is saying I'm right. Dow is up 13. S&P is up. I'm sorry, 13 percent. S&P is up 19 percent. Those are not uh, correct. Uh, <laughs> 13 percent. 1.3 percent. S&P is up 1.9 percent. NASDAQ is up. No, those can't even be right. I'm going to have to stop the uh, stop the uh, stop the music here. <laughs> Just a second. Let's go in and double check this. I'm doing something completely wrong. Ah, yes, I put the really got the decimal points in the wrong places when I put when I put this down, and I should have I should have known better at the time. So let's go back, and uh, we are at uh, <laughs> we're up. <laughs> Just a second here. I'm so sorry about all this. We are uh, Nasdaq up. Two points, uh, 0.27, so 0.27, S&P futures up 0.19, and the Dow up 0.12. And this is kind of the normal this year where the NASDAQ is up a lot more than the Dow. Uh, we have oil still up, uh, but, but not breaking through 83 today, at least in the pre-market. That's probably good news. Um, and then we have the dollar down just a little bit uh, and gold up a little bit. Uh, the bond market has not opened yet uh, in the pre-market, so we're not going to get any numbers there. So I think uh, we are just about, that's about it. So would you please like, if this was any good, even given all my screw-ups just a few minutes ago, <laughs> you still like the program, would you put please put like? You're going to want to notify. I'm telling you, first of all, you know you want to be there every single morning at a, right around 710 California time where I do my morning show, my daily morning show. Uh, we get huge numbers of people now watching that show. So you want to see that if you're not watching that and you want to know what's going to happen early in the morning, you want to hear the overnight news on Tesla. You want to have the overnight news in terms of finances. You want to have the early morning news and analysis of these reports as they come out. And you want to get my take for what's happening in the first 10 or 15 minutes in the morning. That's what we do every single day. And then I've got these guests coming some of the same characters, you know, it's just the content that we've got for you this week is crazy good. Uh, and then I'll do a couple of my own essays. Oh, and oh, I almost forgot to mention it. I've got Brian Wong coming on every single day. We're going to be talking about um, the uh, the LK99, uh, the, the uh, uh, room temperature uh superconductor we're going to be talking about that every single day we're going to give you an update every single day brian is all over this i don't think there's probably anybody in the country who's going to have a better handle on what's happening with this project and we're going to talk about it every single day probably be the last thing i do each day around four o'clock california time but i might switch it up depending on what else is going on because like on wednesday i give that financial report late so i might have to do brian early anyway but every single day I'll have that report bringing you up to date on that. It is the most important thing happening right now in the world. Believe me, this could change everything. Will it take a couple of years to actually get it out as products? Of course it will. But if it's true, it will change things now in terms of way people are begin beginning to think about energy, beginning to think about, about the way that we transmit energy, the way that we distribute energy. I mean, everything will change. It'll be a massive, massive, massive change. So that'll be every single day. So hit notify so that you know when that report is coming out. And then, of course, as I mentioned, all those opportunities on Patreon, just go up and sign up. Uh, it's free for the first seven days. And then it's only 5 or $10 a month, depending on which one you choose going forward. So that is the end of my tale. And I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning. And until then, it's been great talking to you.